also sees things your eyes never could, like objects that have been buried underground, or recently touched by someone's hand. The last advantage of thermal imaging is its unbeatable range, even better than the military night vision goggles. We set up a distance test hundreds of meters away from the tower to compare the infrared cameras against the PVS-31As. To the naked eye on a moonless night, this is what someone holding a cigarette lighter looks like at that distance. This is how it looks through the night vision goggles, and this is how it looks through the infrared cameras. To get even more subtle and remove all direct light, this is what a person checking their phone looks like in those conditions. Totally invisible to the naked eye, discernible through the night vision goggles, and perfectly clear through the infrared cameras. But thermal imaging has its weaknesses as well. It's a digital system with motion delays just like active illumination. Thermal imaging goggles aren't popular because high quality infrared cameras are too big and too power hungry to be portable. And since they only detect thermal radiation, they can't even see lettering on signs, for example. This is looking at it in the infrared. E, F, P, T, O, Z, L, P, E, D. Anything that is visible solely due to the way light reflects off it is invisible to thermal cameras. E, D, F, C, I don't know what that is. Z, F, or Z, P? Currently, there is no one best type of night vision. They all have trade-offs between things like resolution, delay, light situation, concealment, and portability. The entire history of night vision has been driven by trying to minimize these trade-offs. The first night vision technology, known as Gen Zero, was developed for sniper scopes during World War II and the Korean War. They used active infrared illumination, much like the commercial night vision goggles of today. Then Gen 1 night vision was developed for the Vietnam War. These used basic image intensifier tubes with just a photocathode and screen, no microchannel plate. They stacked three of them together in a row, making them extremely bulky and distorted to look through. But the resulting scopes were sensitive enough to operate just off light from the moon and stars, giving them the nickname Starlight. Gen 2 night vision was developed in the 60s and 70s and added the microchannel plate to the image intensifier tube, increasing sensitivity so that they could be used in dark conditions like on cloudy or moonless nights. This addition also made the tubes much more compact, allowing the first sets of handheld night vision goggles to be created. The last generation, Gen 3, became available in the late 80s. These changed the photocathode material into the semiconductor gallium arsenide in order to better convert photons to electrons. They also coated the microchannel plate with an ion barrier film to increase the life of the tube from 3,000 to 10,000 hours. Though there hasn't been an official new generation of night vision goggles in over 30 years, researchers are constantly working on new improvements. Some of the basic research aspects that I can talk about are looking at how to extend the infrared regime of the detectors overall, looking at areas to uh, have devices that can see farther into the infrared with less noise than what we can today. How did you get into night vision goggles? I was in the Marine Corps infantry in early 2000s and we still used a similar model as this one right here in uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. That was one of the actually driving factors of why I got into this field. I was using things like this that were good, but not great. You know, they could have been better. We were also using infrared systems that were not good at all. And so you kind of using those in the, in the field and, and feeling like, you know, asking that question to yourself, why is, why is it not better? And the value of night vision extends far beyond the military. What sort of um, applications would people use these goggles for? Search and rescue or places where maybe there's not power. It's too dark to see and you, you, you want to be able to do things quickly. Thermal imaging has grown to become an entire industry with infrared cameras used in everything from firefighting to building inspections to medical imaging. And the microchannel plate, first developed for night vision, now sits aboard space telescopes like the Chandra X-ray Observatory, helping us discover the hidden world beyond what is simply visible by eye. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. I'm like, there are like tears in my eyes. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I feel like no one can see me because it's in the dark, but you probably can if you have night vision on.
testing this night vision technology perfectly illustrates how there is no substitute for hands-on exploration to truly appreciate new innovations. But you don't have to go all the way to a military base to get hands-on with cutting-edge tech. In fact, you can do it from anywhere with this video's sponsor, Brilliant. And you can